my fellow comic book collectors, it's Alan, the Comic Collector Geek, and this is going to be a cool show with uh, my good friend Mark Olroyd from overseas. Hello. Uh, we're going to look at the hottest Silver Age comics for the week, um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get right into it. Let's just have some fun with this one. Um, my face is a bit red for all those people watching, uh, because I just got a shower. Um <laughs> I never get ahead of the shower. My face is always bright red. It's like horrible. Um, so this is uh, Blue Beetle number 62, I believe. What's the issue number again? One. Number one. Oh, yeah. Sorry. This is why well, I think 62. Uh, yeah, this is Blue Beetle number one. Um, a very cool book from Charlton. Uh, this book had gone crazy during the Blue Beetle movie when it came out. Right. Um, and it says the first Silver Age appearance of the Blue Beetle. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So, Blue Beetle actually made an earlier appearance, but not in the Silver Age. Like, uh, well, uh, in Charlton. Like, it's a different Blue Beetle than the one from Fox, if you're a Golden Age collector. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So, this is... Seems a bit what? strange to have. I mean, Blue Beetle is a bit of a strange type title for a superhero. So to put it to happen twice, uh, independent of each other, is a bit strange. Yeah, yeah. Um, Unless Charlton were copying. Well, I mean, the original uh, Blue Beetle from the Golden Age is a similar character, right? Okay. I think they're actually connected. Um, I mean, he looks a bit like the Phantom in this picture. Yeah, he does. So, um, yeah. Um, this book, I'm not, I, I hope, I, well, I would expect this book to be way down. It's one that actually I would like to get. I I, I, I kind of refused to get it while it was being like, like it had gone really, really crazy. Like, I mean, when the movie was just being announced and when it came out, it had gone up really, really high. Um, so I'm hoping that this book has kind of dropped, <laughs> actually, because I'd like to pick it up. So who's the cover artist here, then? I'm not sure. Well, it's set. That, I don't know. Bill Frasio, Tony Tallarico, and Frank McGoughlin. So one of them did the cover. Which one? One of them did the cover. I'm not sure. Sometimes you can see it at the, but um, no, I doesn't can't say. see the signatures. I actually like mummy covers too, by the way. Okay. So, yeah. The giant mummy who was not dead. There you go. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is a nine point two. That sounds quite a high grade for a book from nineteen sixty four. And uh, also one that's a Charlton. Charlton's it, paper is usually known for really oh, yes, well it's, <laughs> it started falling apart even before it was being printed on. Right. Um, yeah. So you think this is down? I would say so, yeah. Well, it is, but it's not down from the film. Um, it's down it's, from 2016. Uh, when was the film? The film was last year, wasn't it? Or the year before? Was it last year? Yeah. So I think it was last year. This didn't this particular grade didn't go loopy. Maybe it's just because it's such a high grade. Yeah. Uh, you don't see it that often. Um so what's uh, what was the previous price for this book? Like what was the record for this book? Well, uh five hundred and no, eight hundred and ninety dollars in March twenty sixteen. Well that's the, the adjusted inflated price, inflation price. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. It was um, $675. So it's down maybe $100 or less? Yeah. Yeah. So not not much. Um, okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess I got to wait a little bit longer uh, for it to drop. Um, but maybe the lower grades. I'm not, probably... I'm not sure this is going to drop any more, Alan. Well, yeah. I mean, if it if that was the price back then, it probably has no room to drop. No. Um, and there isn't a bunch. Well, there's of only a hundred. 
145 on the census. That's right. That's pretty pretty low. <laughs> Very low. Um, let's is have, there a nine eight in this one? Let's have a look at the overview. Uh, there is three nine eights. Um, what is okay. the, most, the most common grade? Is an eight O by the looks of it. Yeah, this is one of those books that up till recently, as I said, the the movie did make it go kind of crazy. Up till recently, it didn't really have that much value. So you wouldn't get a ah, grade unless that, you had a That's the movie effects movie. there, Alan. Yeah. I knew there had to be, because it had gone crazy during the movie. So okay, so let's look at the 8 What what was the price during the loopiness? <laughs> the loopiest price was 714 for an 8 0. Which is more than this 9 0 that just a uh, 9 2 that just sold. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. Um, and the, and that's down now. Oh goodness, yes, this has come down. It's gone down to less than half in a year. Yeah, yeah. The movie didn't do that well, and um, yeah, it sort of eliminated the idea that they're going to make you know sequels, and that's that's a major killer in terms of a character. Yeah, I didn't watch it. Did you give it a bad review? Um. I don't even think I reviewed it. Um, I, I, you know, I did watch it. I would give it like a six or seven out of ten, maybe six. Okay. You know, it was watchable. I'll watch it when it comes on streaming. I mean, I, 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 you know, a six out of ten is not like you know, no, like the best movie ever. No, but it's it doesn't. Okay, so did, people, it doesn't have people fighting on top of submarines in it, for instance. No, no, none of that. Um, but. You know, uh, disregard for human life. There was a lot of that. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I thought it was yeah six or seven. Um, so yeah. So, how, by the way, did you watch the Deadpool Wolverine movie? Yes. I'm yes. just curious. What did you think of that? I thought it was highly entertaining. I enjoyed it. Okay. Good. Okay. So that's. I was just curious because we last time we spoke, you didn't. Hadn't seen it, so I was curious. Yeah, so I, I went to see it. Um, and I, 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 for me, it was proper filmmaking. They made a movie that people wanted to watch, and it was enjoyable. Um, yeah. You know, was it the most That's... intellectually challenging movie ever? No. Um, well, it's actually used for the Mensa test. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if you've watched the movie, you were not in Mensa. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> Uh, no, I thought it was good fun. Uh, I thought some good laughs, and uh, I thought Hugh Jackman was a good foil. Uh, yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, for for, for you need that straight man and the the comedic person, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So I thought they were so, a good double act. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Blue Beetle wasn't that good. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I would. I, I, That's I, where I, this I, was all coming back to. So yeah, I think I, eight out of ten for the Wolver for the Deadpool Wolverine movie for me. That's why I would give it two. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. Okay, cool. Right. Um. Okay. So that's the first one. Let's see what's number two here. Number two. So actually, this one was put on the list because it was inspired by um my friend uh, Stephen Gentner. He oh, yes. um, was making a run of uh, the gold suit uh, Iron Man. So oh, he was right. kept on yeah. showing me pictures. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, and this one kind of got influenced by that. So I was like, oh, this is like, you know, the second appearance of uh, Iron Man. So it's mm -hmm. Tales of Spence 40. Yeah. Uh, but it's also the first appearance of the gold suit. Oh, does, so, does the gold suit appear in the first... Uh... No, he's wearing the he's wearing the the ugly suit, the the gray suit. Oh yes, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so this is his gold suit era. How long does but the yeah. gold suit? How long does the gold suit last? How many comics? It doesn't last that long. It's like maybe like I think six issues. I'm, I think it's something like that. It's not many issues, and then it goes to the gold and red. Yeah, and then that's the way we kind of know him now. But yeah. So what do the notes say? Uh, second appearance of Iron Man. Armor changes from grey to gold. You see, you're spot on. Spot on. Uh, 
Jack Kirby, Don Heck, Larry Lieber, Sol Brodsky, and Steve Ditko art. So, lots of talent. <laughs> that is Kirby on the cover, though. Yeah, it looks like Kirby, yeah. I would say so. Just the poses? I don't yeah, know. It's the, people. It's, the, this... it's the people in the background. <laughs> Those are yeah, definitely... that, that is, that's another thing, too. Yeah, but I always, I always find it superheroes are in kind of that action pose. I don't know. It's like a thing. <laughs> I mean, what is this guy in blue doing? He's like, you know, like, oh, the sky's falling. I don't know. <laughs> and the, woman yeah. in the purple dress is completely nonplussed, isn't she? She's just carrying on. <laughs> well, yeah, she's an extra that was just hired to be in the background. Okay. <laughs> And the hat, oh, yeah. the hat, if you just showed me that bottom left hand corner and asked me who the artist was, I'd probably be able to tell you because of the hat. Yeah. Well, you know, also those hats, whenever I see that kind of hat in uh, comics, I think, okay, this is 60s. Yeah. Well, yeah, like probably also Kirby. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Very nice. Okay. Up, down, I suspect down. Probably, but seven eighty is a good. Seems like a good price for a four five. Oh yeah, but it's an early uh, four five. Hang on. I mean, it is the first gold suit, so that is kind of a major one. Second appearance, that is major as well. Uh, oh wow, that's a bit odd. I think we need to ignore that one, whatever that was. <laughs> that was a massive spike. <laughs> and it wasn't COVID. Somebody was really desperate to get the book that day. <laughs> that was a really odd sale. Um, oh, what was that sale? How much was that? One thousand six. I think that's. An, I think that's rogue. Well, that's not. Wow. Yeah. Fixed price on eBay. Wow! Somebody just wanted it and was willing to pay some crazy somebody, price. Wow! That's crazy. Had to pay um, three times the previous sales price. <laughs> I imagine the seller was quite happy about that one. I imagine the seller um, was over the moon. <laughs> Especially if the seller was the person who bought this one at 600 and, you know, you could have bought this one in um, in August and then sold it for $1,000 more two months later. Yeah, it seems, by the way, uh, it seems like this one has kind of come off the floor, by the way. Mm -hmm. Just looking at those prices, it's kind of, Got yeah. a little bit of a yeah. bounce I think it's up. Found, it's found this new level uh, around about here. And by the way, the new level, like if you look at this book traditionally, it was pretty flat. Yeah. And it was only Go back to here. Like, so October, that's October 2019. So it's significantly up from there. It was 321 then, and it had been 321 forever. Uh, and it's now, yeah. now it's now comfortably sitting around 700, 750. So yeah. Uh, that's that's quite quite a reasonable performance. Yeah, so I mean, you know, that sort of shows that there's some love to this book. Um, I think people do like these early um, gold suit, you know, comics. Uh, it's probably Stephen causing disrupting the whole market. <laughs> he, he's the disruption in the force. Um, <laughs> if he's been out there buying up all the gold suit comics, that's why these have gone up. I mean, this is not <laughs> of the. How many of these are on the census? Set? Let's have a look. There's one thousand one hundred and twelve. I thought one thousand two hundred and twelve. That's pretty low. It is quite um, low, yeah. But it is a mid-run comic. You know, it's not like um, like people would have been like expecting some key element to this book, right? Where they would save it. Well, if you you, you might have gone, oh, look at that. Who's that man in the gold suit? Because you've never seen uh, it maybe. before. But yeah. uh yeah, I don't know. I thought it was a cool, a cool yeah. one. I always like that. Yeah, that's done all right. It's a book that I'd love to have in my collection. I don't have any um I don't think I have any of the gold maybe I have one gold suit one. That's I've it. got a I've got a couple of really really oh, maybe two. Ones. I have the one where it's the smelter, so that's also yes. uh yeah. it's gold suit. Right, number three, Bing Fang Foom. I always love this book. <laughs> so, uh, Fing Fang Foom. Um, this seems, by the way, a really great price. So this is uh, Strange Tales 89. Am I wrong about that? Probably. No, you're correct about that. 89. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and it's the first appearance of Fing Fang Foom. Um, just so you know, I bought this comic, and my copy is ungraded, but yeah, it's he- a solid, it's either a three or three five. It's it's okay. actually my my copy looks slightly better than this one. Yeah. So maybe it's a three five. Um and I paid a thousand Canadian back in the day. Uh, so that was like um that was two, three years ago. Okay. So how much did this sell for? This one sold for 800 US. Oh, okay. So it's gone down then. Yeah. So, I mean, that, and I bought it not during the height of COVID or anything like that. All right. So maybe it was maybe before COVID. So it was like, I think it was like 2019, actually. So five years ago. Wow. So when I saw this price, I was actually a little bit shocked because it's a, <laughs> it didn't mean, means mine didn't fare so well. All right. Okay. Let's have a look at this then. How has this performed? Or maybe I overpaid at the time. But oh, no. This, this has had this been in a steady decline ever since COVID. Uh, so during COVID, it peaked around 2,500. Mm-hmm. It's now down at. 840 so oh this is a for badly uh and is it yeah how how was it before covid did i overpay at the time well it was a thousand dollars in october 2020 yeah so um you know that's really before the the peaking right so um when did you buy yours so, yeah. 2019 it was must have been 20, like 2019 it was like 2019 or early to 2020. It was okay, somewhere so around there. It's somewhere between. Okay, so you should have paid. Uh, you should have paid about eight or nine hundred dollars, which is what you did pay. I actually paid less than that because okay. it's roughly like yeah, I paid about I paid about nine hundred, eight to nine hundred. Uh, what you should have done was sold it. Uh, less than that, yeah. Right. You should have sold it in September 2021 for two thousand six hundred. Yes. You should have waited until now. And, and then bought it, it again. <laughs> yeah. And you'd made yourself um, about uh, $1,500. Yeah. And still have the comic. Yeah. I wish I kind of did that. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool if you could just magically go back and like have it so that all the comics in your collection you bought at the, the lowest price, yeah. sold it at the highest, and then rebuy it? Yeah. <laughs> And then have the extra money. I'd be for, I'd be super rich by then. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Whereas what you've done is sat on it for five years, and you're exactly where you started. Exactly, but I still yeah. have a cool comic. Yeah, you do still, and you've been able to look at it for the last five years. Exactly, and enjoy it. I love the, the that book. I like my crazy monsters. He's a crazy monster, so. He is a crazy monster. I do like Fing Fang Foom. Uh, I just like. Oh wait, wait. How much? What's the census quickly? Oh yes, we... sorry. Um, census. Oh, it's very low. Five four eight. That is incredibly low. Yeah. I mean, this is Marvel. We're talking talking about. This is not DC. <laughs> this is Marvel. So, I, it, it just shows that those ones that were later in the run, like you know, people don't necessarily expect some key issue. And these and Fing Fang Foom at the time was a cool monster, but they didn't utilize him again until many years later. I know, but if you're sitting around in 1961, do you spend your money? Do you spend your ten cents buying Strange Tales '89, or do you t- do you sp- spend your money on Amazing Spider-Man issue one? Yeah, yeah, definitely uh, Amazing Spider-Man one. Well, there you go. So that's probably why not many of these got bought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was Fing Fang Foom or uh, that strange spider creature. I think I'd have gone for Fing Fang Foom. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like Spider-Man, no. Okay. So, uh, from an yeah, investment point of view, you'd, you'd have been a lot better off buying Spider-Man. Um, yes, yeah, your ten Your 10 cents spent on this are now worth $870. If you'd spent your 10 cents on Amazing Spider-Man 1... Uh, they'd be worth more than that. Probably about 8000 Yeah. Right. And next up. Oh, it's a lovely Batman. It is the first appearance of Poison Ivy. And it's got the go-go checks to prove it's it. Go-go checks. Has it got the poster? Yeah, of course. It's a blue label, so it's got the poster. Pin up. Yeah, he's got the poster. 
Um, so yes, this is uh, Detective Comics 180, uh, no, Batman Comics 181, first appearance of Poison Ivy. And um, so Carmine and, Infantino and Murphy Carmine Infantino. Infantino cover. Yeah. When two people do the cover, what? How do, how does that work then? I don't know. I don't know. You know, they must divide up, you know, oh, you do the faces here, I'll do this part or whatever. I'm not sure how Perhaps it works. Carmine Infantino did the checks at the top and then Murphy Anderson did all the rest of it. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's Infantino uh, that did uh, Poison Ivy part, or maybe I don't know. Maybe that's Murphy Anderson. I don't know. I'm not sure. Right. Uh, so I always think of the uh, the Flash one, but yeah. So first appearance of Poison Ivy, Pamela Lillian Isley. Wow. I actually never knew her real name, Pamela Lily Ider. Uh, Iverson. I knew it was Pam Isley. I, I, Isley. I didn't know her middle name was Lillian. Um, there you go. 1966. That's that's the year England won the World Cup, Alan. If you didn't know. Oh wow. Okay, so it's a key significance for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's not going to happen again, is it? Um, well, it hasn't <laughs> happened since. Um, so if you're an England football fan, you've had a long wait. Well, you're still waiting. All right. Uh, and this is the book to commemorate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Very nice. Let's see. Uh, I know this one's come down. Now, whether this come down since the last sale, I don't know. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. It's, it's, it's a sort of steady decline rather than like that. Like off a cliff, like yeah. Rock. But the sad, the sad thing about this is it's it's now lower than it was pre-COVID. I think a lot of books are. I think that it's just like the overall market. Like you know, you get always that um, you know boom bust kind of thing. Right now we're in the bust. Yeah. And uh, right now we're getting that overcorrection. Yeah. With yeah. a lot of the books, I mean, there's some books that are still. Like, I have kind to say, of, like, I think recovering. that's. A good, I think that's a good buy at eight forty. I don't think that's coming much lower. Um, so I think there's only one direction for that to go. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is like a, a new floor to kind of bounce yeah. off of. Yeah. I mean, it. You know, Poison Ivy is not just a, like a, a character that was popular at one time. And now forgotten, she's still they they still do a new Harley Quinn TV series, right? Yeah. With uh, that, and Poison Ivy is the main one of the main characters. Yeah. Uh, Poison Ivy has her own. Uh, she's got her own title series. at the moment. She's running her. Yeah. Own, yeah. She's had it for a yeah. couple of years. Yeah. So my point is, like, this is a this is a character that's front and center. It's not like one that's you know. A blast from the past. Well, you know, she's she's all the environmental green people. Poison Ivy sort of fits in with that, doesn't she? Yeah, she's crazy just like them. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh dear. I, right. I can see my channel getting demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, none, of, none of the money uh, Alan makes from these videos uh, goes to uh, any environmental causes. No. <laughs> uh, I have crazy stories, actually, uh, from actually uh, when I was in university about that. So uh, I tried to work as a canvasser for Greenpeace. You tried to do what with her? Uh, you know, do you know the company? Uh, do you know the uh like the nonprofit um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Greenpeace. Yeah, I tried to work for them when I was uh, when I was in university. Really? How did that go? Uh, I realized that all these environmental groups are just full of it. <laughs> <laughs> they were all about money. That's all they cared about. I was like, okay, you don't really care about the. No, they, they. It was all about you. Got to do you know? Use this to get money. Use this to get money. Get do you know? It was not about. Caring about the environment, it was not about that at all. It was just purely about money. I was like so disappointed, and uh, they also treated the employees like really, really poorly. 
Yeah. So I was like, this company is so unethical. <laughs> I don't want to be part of it. So yeah. Yeah. It was an eye awakener. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um, interesting. Okay. So that's enough about Alan. Let's go on to look at Rob. <laughs> Back to comics. So what's the, oh, okay? Yeah. So okay. So um, yeah. So now we're. This is the one that I talked about in the last video, I believe, that we did. Yes. And I, I do love this book. Uh, right. This is, so this is where we did cover. get two people doing the cover. Um, exactly. We got Storanko, who's got his signature on it. But apparently, Alan tells me Marie Severin did it a face. Yes. Storanko's face was too frightening. And too angry looking. This is yeah. more struggling looking. You know, he's struggling to lift up his own name. Yes. He's straining. Yeah. I think it's a brilliant cover. It's very Atlas. Love the colors. Yeah. You know, Incredible Hulk battle. Yeah, and I quite like it when they use the trade dress as part of the cover, if you see what I mean, rather than it just being a mm -hmm. trade dress. You know what's weird about this one? Does it look a little faded to you? It does a bit, yeah. Yeah, the but colors aren't... Yeah, that vibrant. It still looks for nine four. I think it is a bit faded, but it works. Yeah, yeah. Um, nine four. It can't be all that faded. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes what happens is you know you get it graded as nine four, and then you leave it out in the sun. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do that. Um, Put it on your wall for a few years. Yeah, I almost want to see what another copy looks like if this is the way it is, that it is that color. I, I I don't know. I thought mine was a little bit more a little bit more purple, deep purple, and a little bit more green, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, yes. So Alan does want more green. <laughs> so nine four for seventeen hundred. Yes, that sounds low. The... Oh, it's good. It's actually this quite is, strong. This is really wow. held. This is really held up post COVID. I think we we when we talked about the book last time, we saw yeah. the same thing. Yeah, yeah. This is re this is really held up. And if you look pre COVID, pre COVID price was about nine hundred, and it's settling here at double that eighteen hundred. I mean, some of we have seen this on a few books where the COVID where the it's held up, um, you know, the price has not dropped back significantly. So it's interesting which books have held up and which books have dropped back. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it could have been that they were historically undervalued or underpriced. Yeah. And then when the COVID thing happened, people realized, hey, this is actually a pretty cool book. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not, I'm just sort of speculating, but yeah, it's cool that it's maintained. Um, that's rare. <laughs> For nowadays, right? Yeah. Well, it's, the other thing I Here, think... Like, can we, just, I think it, I can think we it, take a look at one of the other copies just quickly? I'm just curious about the purples. Sorry to make you go down a rabbit hole. Just pick another copy that... Like that one. See the purple? Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Much deeper, right? I'll get it to scroll. Okay. Sorry, Ta. Oh, I yeah. Work it is, yeah. Yeah. And the greens are much greener. Mm. See what I'm saying? Mm. That's yeah, a much that, better that looking. One is clearly faded, yeah. Yeah. And that could come into play into the price, right? If if people see it and think, okay, it's a 9 4, but it's not was it left out yet. in the sun? I mean, no, it could have been left out in the sun, you know. Yeah. Just yeah. what what CGC says is that it's graded at nine four that day, but they don't guarantee the grade ten years from now. No. So if you leave it out in the sun, you do whatever to it. Well, that's on you, <laughs> and it's maybe not a nine four anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I thought that was interesting. Okay, so that is it for this part of the video. But we got some more cool books. We got some more cool books. And we're going to put them on Mark's channel. So go over to Mark's channel and check out the top five from this list. Um, some really cool ones. I, I was kind of, I liked this week. It was a good week. And uh, so, yeah. we'll also try to see if we can find another charity that Alan wants to do. <laughs>
<laughs> There's some good charities out there. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a hater. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> right. So thanks again. Bye everyone. Go over to Bye. Mark's channel. Bye.